In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to delete anything from your credit report in 60 days. Let's begin. Alrighty, switching over here to my handy dandy Google Doc, the first step we wanna take in getting these negative items removed from our credit report is making sure we're clear on identifying which items we're trying to get removed. Now, the most common items that you may wanna challenge from your credit report are negative accounts, so like collections and charge-offs, repossessions, evictions, bankruptcies, things like that. Second to that is inquiries, and then third is excess personal info. It's extremely important that before you start the restoration process on your own, you learn how to read a credit report. So you understand what are some of the different things that you need to look for and pay attention to when you're looking to dispute on a negative item. So for the purposes of this video and the dispute strategy that we're going to be using, all you need to be able to identify when disputing on negative items or looking for negative items as you're reading through your credit report is going to be the account name and the account number as a point of reference for the dispute letter that we're going to be using. So uh, to quickly use an example, this is a dummy credit report. This is not mine, but to use this as an example, this is typically what you'll see when you sign up for a credit monitoring service like a MyFreeScore now like a identity IQ, like a smart credit and beyond. So the top of your credit report is where you're going to be able to see all the personal information and any info there that you want to have removed. Then the, the, the meat and potatoes of the credit report after that is going to be the actual report in and of itself, right? So you're going to be able to see um, whatever accounts that you have on there. So for example, here with this credit report for this person, we see that they have a charged off discover card. They have another charged off discover card here. They have some late payments here. And then this account was also charged off as well. I'm not going to go through this entire thing, but just to show you guys what an example of what it would look like, especially if you've never truly taken time to sit down and look at your report. Also, I'll recommend guys, if you are going to use, go and get access to your report, don't use credit karma, use either Identity IQ, my free score now, my score IQ or smart credit. I personally like my free score now. So if you are interested in getting signed up with them, the link for that is going to be in the description below. But this is an example of what you would see with your credit report, right? And then at the bottom, you would have all the inquiries that you may want to potentially challenge that you want to cross check and make sure they're not connected to any person open accounts before you do challenge. And then lastly, you would have the direct contacts of creditors that you may want to get in contact with as you get ready to go into this dispute process. Swinging back over to my handy dandy Google Doc, a frequently asked question I get whenever I do these DIY credit restoration videos, Marv should I dispute all the negative accounts that I have on my report at the same time? Or if I have 10, should I dispute like two this round and then three the next round and then the remaining uh, five, the third round after that? Or should I just dispute one account at a time till it gets removed? My personal rule of thumb is I recommend challenging all the negative items at once. My years of working on close friends and family's credit and doing it within my company, we've never taken an approach where we've like broken it up. We've experimented with it, but it didn't make a significant difference in us doing it that way versus us challenging all at once. So with that being the case, why not just challenge all at once, right? So you can maximize how many negative items you can get removed and not have to be disputing for a lot longer than what you need to. So if that's a question that you have coming into this process, I would recommend just disputing all the negative accounts at once and not breaking it up how many you're disputing month to month basis. Uh, and then also, if you are watching this video at the end, or as we go through everything, you decide like, hey, this all sounds fine and dandy, but I'm not trying to restore my credit for myself or by myself. I want a company to do it. Head over to my company's website at takeallfinancial.com to book a free consultation so that me and my team could do it for you. But back to the video. After we've taken time to pull up our re report and we see all the negative items we have on there from charge offs to late payments to items that have been sold off into collections agencies and beyond, the next step that we're going to take after that is actually going to take time. We're going to take time to remove any inquiries and excess personal information before we start the dispute process for those negative items. Now, why are we doing this? If you're restoring your credit profile, you do this beforehand, it's just going to allow for you to focus a lot more when you do send out those dispute letters on those negative accounts that you're challenging right? Simple input is that. And it's just something I personally like to do ahead of time to kind of just start to get my credit report clean because it's something you're going to have to do eventually. And for me personally, I like to tackle those items ahead of me getting to the negative items, the negative accounts I'm going to challenge before I get into them. Now, there are two approaches that you can take when it comes to removing not only inquiries, but also excess personal information. So when it comes to the excess personal information, one approach you could take is a method that is called the 11020 method. Simply put, all the 11020 method is you're taking a personal information letter and you're going to in that letter, you're going to send it to the credit reporting agencies and highlight what personal information you want to stay on your report and what personal information you want taken off. And the reason why it's called the 11020 method is because on the first day is when you're going to send out that personal information letter by itself. 10 days after that first day is when you're going to send that very same letter again to the same credit reporting agencies. And then 20 days after that 10th day is when you're going to send out that same personal information letter for the third and final time. This is a strategy that I've experimented with back in my own company 
company. We don't do it as much anymore, but in the earlier days we did. And it bore a lot of great fruit when it came to removing all of some of that excess personal information ahead of time before we started the dispute process. So I would definitely recommend that you guys go ahead and do that. And remember, removing excess personal information actually helps the dispute process when it comes to those negative items, because a lot of times credit reporting agencies can use old addresses, employers, and things like that to hold collections and other negative items on your credit report. So this is great. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, Marv, I don't know how to create a personal information letter. Super duper simple. Don't overthink it, right? This is an example of personal information letter that I've actually used before. Once again, if you're creating the letter from scratch, not that hard. It doesn't have to be structured in a certain way. As long as you're clear in what you're asking for in the letter, no matter how it looks, it'll get the job done. All you're doing in the letter is you're outlining what your current name, address, and SSN and current personal information is, right? And you're providing your verification information to confirm that you are who you say you are, which is your driver's license and your proof of address, like you will with a dispute letter. And then from there, you're highlighting what is the excess personal information that you want removed. So you wanna make sure that you do that. So coming back over to here, if we come to this credit report here, using this as a visual example, for this person, this person's name is Han Solo. Well, we come here, we see that there's a bunch of other names like Nerf Hender and Scruffy Looking, and we would remove all these excess names if our name is only Han Solo, and we would put that in a PI letter, right? And then for pre previous addresses, we would remove the stuff that's here, right? So 555 Falcon Way and 789 Imperial Avenue. If I don't live there anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and have those things removed as well. Very simple, very straightforward. And once again, this is just an example of a PI letter that you could use. However, if you're watching this and you don't wanna put your PI letter together and you want me to provide a free resource or create a video around not only this letter, but other free resources that can help you to remove things like PI letters and other little ticky tack things on your credit report, comment the word resources, please. And I'll make another video breaking down all these different resources that I can provide to you guys and how you can use them to clean your credit report up. That takes care of the PI. And then when it comes to the inquiries, I always tell people to keep it super simple. You can just call into the credit reporting agencies to get those removed. So for hard inquiries, can you include them in your dispute letter? Yes, you can. But for me personally, to speed up the process, I like to challenge those separately. Um, reason being is just because you can get inquiries removed a lot faster calling in if you're disputing on your own behalf than you can sending in letters. So that's what I'm a proponent of versus including them in my dispute letters that I'm using to challenge accounts. If you don't already, here are the direct numbers for the credit reporting agencies that myself have and like to use when removing inquiries so that you could do the same. So if you have Experian inquiries, this is the number you used to call an Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, and beyond, and you should be good to go. So 11020 method for the personal information letters, calling into the credit reporting agencies for the uh, inquiries. Okay, so that's the second step. So first step, we've identified those negative items. Second step, we've got, we're gonna go ahead and take those steps to remove the inquiries and excess personal information. Now, once those two things are done, the next and final step is gonna be for us to go ahead and create our 60 day dispute plan. So let's take some time to break this down, right? A round of disputes is processed every 30 days. So if we wanted to leave everything from our credit report in 60 days, that means that when we're creating a 60 day dispute, we need two rounds of disputes. Now, there are three types of disputes that we can process, which is factual, Metro 2, and consumer law. Of these three dispute methods that we can use, I personally am a proponent of consumer law. So for the example I'm gonna be using in this video, we're going to use consumer law. Now, on top of the letters that we're gonna be sending out, we also wanna have a complementary dispute method that we're using with these letters to maximize our chances of getting those negative items removed in 60 days. Because 60 days is a very short time frame to get negative items off of your credit report. So on top of the consumer law dispute strategy we're gonna use, we're also gonna send letters to the CFPB, right? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The reason why is because this is gonna increase our chances of not only getting those negative items removed, but also getting them removed in that 60 day time frame that we're shooting for. So we're not just sending out dispute letters, we're giving them a one two punch along with that to help strengthen our chances of going ahead to getting it off. Another strategy that we're going to be using to ensure that we get these negative items removed in 60 days is instead of us using one consumer law in each of our dispute letters, so we're sending out two rounds of disputes. And instead of having one round of dispute have one law and a second round of disputes having another law, what we're going to do to maximize our chances, we're actually going to include two consumer laws in each of the the round letters. So round one is going to have two laws. That's going to act as a one-two punch. I don't know why I threw jabs like that knowing I dang well can't fight. And round two is going to have two consumer laws. That's also going to have give a one-two punch. Each round we're sending out a round of disputes that's going to have two different consumer laws in it along with the CFPB complaint. And we're going to do that for two rounds equating up to 60 days to get those negative items removed, right? So what is that going to look like? So in round one, my, my go-to, my silver bullet, my end-all be-all that I love and swear by, 15 U.S.C. 1681 E.B., and we're also going to use 15 U.S.C. 1681 I-5. 
Those are the laws we're going to use in the letter. So for those who aren't familiar, these are essentially two laws. And this is an example of me using those laws, two laws that reference accuracy from the Fair Credit Reporting Act, simply stating that whenever a consumer reporting agency prepares a consumer report, it shall follow reasonable procedures to assure maximum possible accuracy of information about the individual with whom the report relates. And if it doesn't, if the uh, investigation is done where it comes back, where the information that's being reported isn't accurate by law, the credit reporting agency has to either update that information or delete it from a credit report. Very great way to get items removed. This is something I still use in my company to this day, and we're getting 15, 20, 5,000, $10,000 collection accounts uh, deleted from people's credit report using just these two laws alone. So this is what you're going to use in round one. Simple, straightforward. All you're going to do is Google these laws, find them on the Cornell law website, and then you can make your own custom dispute letter similar to what I've done here. You would put your personal information here at the top of the letter, the laws that you're referencing here in the middle of the letter. And to close out the letter, you would highlight the information, the accounts that you would want removed, right? In our case, we're not going to be challenging personal information because we already got that removed beforehand, right? So we can remove that here from the sample letter. And we're simply just going to put whatever accounts we want to remove. And like I said, at the top of the call, we only need two things for the accounts, right? We need the account name and we also need the account number, which we have here. And from there, these laws can go ahead and get them removed. So we're cooking with Crisco. Now we come back here. After we use that in round one, what are we going to use in round two, 30 days later, after we send out that round one letter? What's going to be our second one to punch? It's going to be this right here. We're going to use method of verification, which is 15 USC 1681 I7 and 15 USC 1681 B, which is method of verification partnered with permissible purpose. Using showing you guys that in real time. What do both of these laws state? Method of verification, you're going to use this in the second round. If after your first round disputes, the credit reporting agencies come back and they say, hey, man, listen, based on our investigation, you're saying this is inaccurate. We're saying it's accurate. Cool. Well, under 15 USC 1681 I7, I need for you to show me what procedure that you took to verify that this information is accurate. And I need for you to provide that for me within the next 15 days. On top of that, though, instead of you simply just sending out that letter by itself, on top of that, what you're also going to send to them is 15 USC 1681B, which is permissible purpose, where you're stating, hey, not only do I want y'all to provide me written proof of the investigation you say that you've conducted so I can see how this item is accurate, but under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, you cannot report any information to my credit report that I have not given you written permission to do so. I don't recall me giving you written permission to put this charge over this collection of my credit report. So how about we do this? On top of the investigation I need for you to provide me written proof of, I also need for you to show where did I give Experian TransUnion and Equifax written permission for this account to be in my account in the first place. And then you're saying, I not only do I need for y'all to show me both of these things, and if you can't, I need to get it removed. You could say that I, I put this here, but you guys don't have to put this or I will seek monetary damages. I actually will make a separate video on this because this is something that I'm seeing a lot of individuals are using in the credit restoration space to maximize their results, threatening to go the route of suing the credit reporting agencies because they have been working their tail off to be harder and harder about removing items. But that's for a separate video. But these are the two laws that you're pretty much using in there saying, I need you guys to provide me proof of the investigation you just did. But then I also need for you to provide me proof of the written permission I gave for this account to be on my credit report in the first place. Okay. And once again, remember, not only are you using these two laws in round one and these two laws in round two, but after you send them out, you're also including them inside of your CFPB complaints as well. So even if you don't hear back from the credit reporting agencies after you process your first round of disputes, do not let that discourage you. Make sure that you still send out this second round. So if you send out round one and don't hear anything back from any of the credit reporting agencies, make sure after 30 days, you still send out your second round of disputes because you always want to make sure your disputes are going out every 30 days minimum, 45 days maximum. You never want to go below or above that time period, right? As you're going on a round by round basis. So even if you don't hear back from the credit reporting agencies still make sure that you're taking time to send this out to ensure that you're able to maximize your chances of getting these negative items removed okay so once again this is going to be our round one approach so just to do a quick recap we're going to identify the negative items on our report and which ones we want to get removed once we identify all those the negative items on our report we want to get removed we're going to remove the inquiries and excess personal info on our credit report before we start the dispute process using the 110 20 method and calling into the credit reporting agencies then after that we're leveraging consumer law and cfpb complaints we're going to attack the credit reporting agencies using 15 usc 1681 eb and 15 usc 1681 i5 which is accurate under the Fair Credit Reporting Act and filing the, that same letter as a CFPB complaint. Then in round two, we're going to use the method of verification law along with permissible purpose and file that also as a CFPB complaint. And if you follow this blueprint to a T, you should be able to get those negative items removed from your credit report 
moving forward. But that's all for this video. I sincerely hope you guys enjoy the content on here. And if you don't want to go through things like this to restore your own credit, make sure you head over to my company's website at takeoffinancial.com to book a free consultation with us to talk more about how we can help you get your credit restored. But until then, peace.